If there's one question we've received the most since we tied a breeze block to our first set of videos and kicked them into the content ocean, it's got to be, what's the first few games I should buy if I'm just getting into the hobby? Well, that's a great question, and we'd like to humbly suggest a small list of absolute winners that wouldn't go amiss in any would-be board game enthusiast collection. If you've already started your journey into the world of board games, then perhaps there'll be some on this list that have slipped you by. Or, if you're an absolute veteran with more games in your house than we've had hot dinners, then sound off in the comments with some of the games that drew you into the hobby. But, let's kick things off with number one. We open proceedings with an absolute classic, a game that most will likely be familiar with, and with good reason. In Carcassonne, you and some friends will be building the titular French city out of a series of square tiles that essentially make up one big open-ended jigsaw puzzle. Your turn is easy, you just grab a random tile and place it next to any tile that fits, as long as all the sides match, that is. Once it's down, you can choose to place one of your limited number of player pieces down on one of the bits of the tile, like a road, a city, or the grass that represents fields. As the game goes on, that little one tile city you might have chosen will expand bigger and bigger until it gets finished off or the game ends. And at that point, those meeples you placed are worth points and the player with the most points at the end of the game wins. It's a super easy game to get a grasp on and the fact that you'll only ever be worried about placing one tile at a time lets you easily assess your options in the moment. And there's some hilarious passive aggression that you will be able to unleash on your opponents when you pick up the tile they've been waiting on and place it on the opposite end of the table from where they wanted it. Carcassonne is also pretty expandable if you'd like to ramp up to some slightly more advanced ideas and tactics. We recommend the Builders and Traders expansion if you'd like to spice things up a little. For any massive poker fans in your friend group, Coup will be an easy sell, a game of bluffing and deception. Coup puts you in the shoes of a corrupt official in sci-fi high society. You and your friends have two important figures under your thumb who will be doing your bidding, their identities hidden from the group. By earning enough cash or utilising your assassin contacts, you can take down the key figures of influence under your opponent's control. Last player standing wins. On the way to the end goal though, you'll need to collect some money, and you'll also need to get the right figures under your control. The Duke, for example, can bring in more money, the Contessa can block assassination attempts, and the Ambassador will allow you to seek out new key figures in court to bring into your arsenal. The nuance, however, lies in the fact that all cards around the table are actually placed face down, which means theoretically you could have anything in front of you, as long as you can convince the other players around the table that you aren't lying to them. Don't get caught out though. Any player around the table can ask you to flip the cards you claim to have used, revealing to everyone just how truthful you've been. If they caught you red-handed, that character is immediately killed and you've lost one of your two lives. If you were telling the truth though, the other player will lose one of their characters instead and you'll get to replace your flipped card with a new one from the deck, once again shrouding you in mystery. This really simple game is easy to teach, and as you play round after round, you'll develop a serious mistrust for your opponents. Every time one of them announces they have the Duke, you'll be replying with, F off, do you? Coming from an absolute veteran of board game design, Vlada Shivatel, Codenames is a party game that will see you split into two teams, sprawling over a 5x5 five five grid of cards, each containing a single random word. One player from each team will be assigned the role of team leader, and these two will be placed side by side looking at one of these colour-coded squares. Each square on this grid represents one of the cards on the table. The ones marked in blue are the ones the blue team will need to guess, and the ones in red are what the red team will need to guess. Each round, the leaders will take it in turns to give clues to the rest of their team to try and get them to guess as many of their coloured words as possible. The twist is, you're only allowed to give exactly one word and one number in your clue. The word will be something that links all of the cards you're trying to hint towards, and the number will reference how many cards on the board actually respond to your clue. For example, if you have the words bike, car and bus on the board all in your colour, you could say vehicle 3 to your team. 
Things are never quite that simple though. The odds of you having something this easy are pretty low and you'll have to think of some pretty clever clues to get a big batch of guesses in one go. Not to mention the fact that the board is also littered with red herrings. If your team accidentally selects something that isn't your colour, there's three levels of how bad things can get for you. Level one, it was a neutral card. No problem, but your turn is ended immediately. Level two, they pick the other team's card. Your opponent scores a point and your turn once again ends immediately. Not great. Level three is especially horrible. Hidden amongst the cards on the table is one marked in black on the grid. If at any point during the game either team selects this card, their team immediately loses. And with that knowledge, every single guess becomes absolute agony. Whichever team can correctly guess all of the colored clues first will be crowned the winner. This game oozes humour and can let clever players really show off. It's essential. Those that know of Matt Leacock might also be aware that his game Pandemic is widely regarded as a staple of gateway board games. It's also available in about 10 different themes from ancient Rome to the Cthulhu mythos. Whilst we do heartily recommend that you try out Pandemic if you haven't already, might we also humbly recommend its 2010 younger sibling, Forbidden Island. Set on, you guessed it, a forbidden island, up to four players will be cooperating against the game to try and nab four little treasures from their temples and escape the isle before time runs out. Now when I say time, I'm not talking about a sand dial or a certain number of turns that you're allowed to play through. As you complete each player's turn, parts of the island will begin to flood and it's up to you to shore up that territory as soon as you can. If an already flooded tile is once again selected from this sinister deck, it's removed from the table for the rest of the game. As time goes on and you play more and more turns, the island will physically start sinking into the sea, possibly leaving you and your friends stranded without hope of rescue. To battle against the rising tides, you'll need to coordinate your actions and work as a team, utilizing each player's unique abilities assigned to them at the start of the game. The diver, for example, can swim through sunken sea spaces to reach their stranded sidekicks. The engineer is super efficient at shoring up sunken spaces, flipping two tiles for the price of one. If you manage to grab all four treasures before the aisle sinks around you and get back to the helipad for takeoff, you and your friends will be the triumphant winners, but even if just one of you is lost to the ocean, then everyone loses. It's a great introduction to the camaraderie and petty bickering of cooperative games, and for that reason we think it deserves a place on your shelves. Sometimes loads of fun can be had with just a single deck of cards, and what better way to show that than with Star Realms? Easily the cheapest game on this list, Star Realms is your first introduction to the heady world of deck building games. You and an opponent will be fighting to reduce each other's authority, which is basically health, to zero. To do that, you'll be building your own little unique deck of cards, starting with just a few traders and piddly little fighters. With the cards that you draw into your hand each turn, you'll be able to spend cash on new cards from an ever-changing shop at the center of the table. Some of those cards might be bigger, more powerful fighters to deal some damage to your opponent. Some might be some additional trade ships to give you more financial options for future turns. You might be lucky enough to build yourself some nice space stations that persist from turn to turn and give you permanent bonuses for as long as they stay alive. Every card, save for those stations, will get fed back into your deck and the next time you reshuffle it, you'll have a chance of drawing them into one of your future hands. Over time, your deck will become more and more powerful, exploding with massive squadrons of fighters and mega laser wielding capital ships. The bigger your deck gets though, the more chaff you'll have to cycle through to get to the good cards. You'll have to be clever and use certain abilities to bin off some of those weaker early game cards to streamline your deck and let those new fancy ships shine through more often. Star Realms is a great introduction to deck building and a game can whiz by super quick. It also literally fits into your pocket, which means you can bring it on a train to the pub or wherever you like, really. We'd be rare not to shove a cowboy game on here, so be prepared to put on some silly wild west decks and some rob a train in Colt Express. With a box containing a 3D train that you build when you get it, it's quite clear to see that Colt Express will offer up some very silly fun if you let it. 
Over in Cowboy Land, you've elected to rob a train on its way to drop off a big suitcase full of money, as well as some wealthy passengers. Problem is, you weren't the only one to have this brilliant idea, and up to four other players will be joining you on the excursion to try and be the best bandito of the bunch, claiming the most cash at the end of the game. On the way to the end of the tracks, you'll be moving, punching, luring, shooting, and probably also rooting and tooting, whatever that means. The core mechanic of the game, though, is that instead of taking turns to choose your actions and reacting to each other's turns, you'll all be programming your turns in at the start of each round, hoping that everything you put down actually happens how you wanted it to. You might have positioned yourself to grab a massive suitcase of cash with the steal action lined up ready to grab it, but then one of your opponents punches you so hard that you drop one of your money bags and fly into the adjacent carriage you then get your steel card just as planned and there's no money here and you get nothing. <sighs> there's a delightful number of ways in which you can mess up your opponent's plans in Colt Express and the same can be done right back at you. There's loads of fun little rules that will sensitively tease some information your way and give you just a hint of what everyone is planning whilst they hide their more nefarious plans in the shadows. More importantly though, it's downright goofy fun and you get to be a cowboy. Woo doggy! Look, it was inevitable, all right? We couldn't not put this in the list. If you haven't played Ticket to Ride, you are missing out. It's the ultimate beginner game. You and your friends will be playing across a region of your choice, be it in the US or Asia, or in this case, Europe, and completing train routes to earn points. You'll start the game with a selection of tickets that'll take you from one point on the map all the way to another. And if you can make one unbroken train line between them, you'll get the points on that ticket. If you don't manage it by the end of the game though, you lose those points instead. Your turn is very simple. You either grab some colored train cards from the supply, uh, you spend some of those colored train cards to complete a train line from one city to another, or you'll pick up some additional tickets to try and push your luck to complete more routes at the end of the game. And honestly, that's it. It's deceptively simple, but you will never know the pure, unadulterated rage that comes with being one train line away from completing a massive route worth a ton of points, only for someone to unknowingly put a massive spanner on your works right at the last hurdle. Or the pure joy of finishing something you didn't think you'd have time to. There's a reason this thing has stayed in the hearts and minds of all who have touched it, and if you're just starting out, it's the perfect thing to kick off your tabletop collection. It works for all ages, all levels of competitiveness, and we heartily recommend it, you lovely little train box you. Mwah. Well, we hope you've spotted some titles to grab to usher you into the hobby of board games, or maybe just some that you missed on your way in. There's a whole world of recommendations we could have thrown at you, but there's not a game on this list that won't be worth your time and attention. Are there any that you wished we'd included? Did you think that one of the games that was picked is absolutely horrible and we shouldn't have picked it? Let us know in the comments. And if this is your first time on the channel, make sure to subscribe and click on the bell button to receive notifications when we put our next video up. And why not have a look at some of the lovely videos we have on the screen for you right now? Available to watch at your leisure, whenever you like. Just click on the video, please. Okay, thanks. Bye.